Yeah. Hello, buddy, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, we're back on our episode, okay? And before I start um, getting into this episode, I just want to say that I have a new Twitter out. Um, it's at Podcast All Right. Also, I have Instagram, Facebook, and so on. It's all the All Right Podcast. So please, all links down in the description below. Please go check that out. Now, less of that, more of this. I have a guest here. We don't, we don't know each other, but I'm, I, this is why I do these podcasts, because I get to know new people, you know, and I, I get guests on that are creative, that, um, that they want to do something, you know, and I think of this guy as one of them guests. I, I watched his TikTok recently, and uh, I found funny as well, um, so, and I, I checked out his Instagram also. Um, yeah, so please welcome Daniel Reynolds. Now, um, Daniel, hey. can, you, can you please give a little <laughs> introduction about yourself, please? Uh, um yeah of course uh hi everybody and th- thank you so much for uh having me on your podcast today anthony i really appreciate it and um well basically my name's daniel reynolds i'm an actor based in scotland but i'm from southwest london so yeah that's the uh, interesting thing about me i live in a beautiful country scotland yeah. recommend it if you've ever been anthony i i've been to edinburgh two times my oh, nice. friend she is doing college over in edinburgh right now and um, she has to come back sadly now because mm-hmm. of all this that's happening but i went over twice and it's fucking gorgeous man it's so nice like the oh, it's so lovely. nice. yeah and she's in the middle as well she's in where this the, the center is the city is as well so it's real nice so i do enjoy oh, it but um beautiful. Yeah, so what I want to I want to get to know you a bit more, man. You know, any guests that come on that I, I want to get to know more. And this podcast is about me learning new things as well. You know, um, other than the guests yeah. that are watching right now. Um, so please, can I? I, I just want to start off by um asking these questions as well. That let I want to go back to early days and so that um, Daniel, what was it like uh, when you were growing up? And so, what was it like as a kid? Was were you always interested in acting since you were a kid? And um, what age did you start getting into that? Uh, um, well, it all started with a famous neighbour of mine, actually. Really, um, when I was, um, I think we lived in, we lived in. Well, so I'm originally from Surrey, but we lived in Cheam. Um, and my mum and dad had just had me recent, like quite quite soon, um, and they got themselves their first flat and all that sort of stuff. And um, my next door neighbour at the time uh, uh, was a famous. Well coming up famous he's famous now but he wasn't at the time i suppose um uh, and uh yeah i watched, started watching his stuff because he was my neighbor his name was uh tim vine i don't know if you ever know who tim vine is you know tim, tim vine, vine the comedian I, um i guarantee you, i do does he, he does a really bad joke crazy hair? does he have really mad crazy hair and where's all the dark and i don't no, I, no, no no i don't i don't i look him up though i look him up after this you know jeremy vine don't you i don't you know jeremy vine I don't. No, you don't. No, right, no. okay. So, yeah, um, <laughs> it was just, um, as I say, it was more the fact of, like, he. I started watching his stuff, and then, you know, I thought, oh, you know, I'll get into acting, and then, obviously, I'd done acting. I went to uh, drama sort of classes in um, in Car Shorten at the time. Uh, when I was really young, we'd done fame and, and all that sort of stuff. Musical theatre really wasn't what I could, uh, what, what I loved, loved to do. Like, I yeah. could sing and I could dance. And act, but you know, I preferred acting. I preferred the depth. Uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to really work on the one part of my um, of my career. And um, you know, I went, you know, I, I then went and done drama in high school, mm-hmm. uh, which I really enjoyed. And and then suddenly I left high school, and you know, life took over, and the acting took a, a seat back. And mm-hmm. and then I didn't. I took a massive break. You know, from 16 to 25, I, I went out and explored the world, done many jobs yeah. and got a bit of life experience and then came back to it eventually. And, you know, it's now it's, my it's career. It's like a 360, isn't it? It's just all reverted back and it came back to you, even though you were like, well, I'm going to go off and do this for a while. But it, it still managed to come back. Do you get me? It still managed to come back and you still have that passion for it. And that that's a good thing as well, because I always ask um, actors that come on to this podcast, um, <clears throat> was there any time uh, while doing this where you thought, like, I don't know if I'm going to get anywhere with this. I don't know if this is what I want to do. Did you did you have them doubts in that time? Was it was there any times where you doubted yourself? Um, well, I think right now, I, I mean, you know, I went back into 
I went into kind of acting college uh, at the age of 25. I'm 28 now. So I've been studying slash working at the same time. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to go, um, you know, straight, you know, not have an experience to go straight into the industry after my education. Yeah. I didn't want that safety net of education uh, to hold me back. So I wanted to go and really explore the industry and work on short films, independent films, student films even you know, to build myself a bit of a rapport, done some little bit of extra work, but not too much, uh, to try and give myself a bit of an indication of, you know, is this definitely all I wanted? And now coming to the three years, well, I'm just at the end of my education now. I think what was, um, you know, this is the kind of make or break for you, for most people when you leave education, you're like, is this really for me? Is it not yeah. for me? Yeah. And I have more hunger now than I did when I first started three Jesus. years ago. Usually people, so, usually people that that hunger that that they'll be on top like when they start because that's when they want to do it most. But that's interesting to hear now. Like after you're like, because usually when people go to college and they do that, they a lot of people fall out of love with it because there's so much things that they have to do on top of that, and it's just life gets in the way and so like that as well, you know. But the likes of yourself, what I'm getting from it is, is that even though uh, life you have jobs that you have to do and so you, you're still doing it as like it's a passion of yours and you're still doing it you get me so fair fair play to you for sticking out because there is a lot of people that as they get older especially when they're getting in like i'm 24 i'll be 25 in july and um i i have a youtube channel i was doing for the past five years and i'm starting to get to the point of that youtube channel where i'm like i don't think i can do that anymore uh, but this right here, that yeah. I can do something like this until I'm like 80, fucking 90 years of age. If I go to <coughs> the podcast, and, you know, the other channel is fucking just comedy yeah. sketches. And so, yeah, me, so um, this is this is something I could do. But but likes of acting, that's that's like that as well, that you can do that into yeah. your fucking 80s, 90s. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, there's always going to be some different type of role that you can do. And, you know, and the more you do it and the, more, the older you get, the more experience you're going to get have from it. Um, and that's that's what I like about acting as well. I'd, I'd fucking I'd love to be an actor, but I just I'm not really good at with scripts. I can't write. I, I can't do with scripts. And with the likes of yourself, um, what what has been the most memory? What was a mem memory moments basically um, that you can remember from your theatre days? What was the best ever uh, performance you've done? If you can remember. Um, I would probably say a couple of years ago I'd done a basically I was uh, Anthony believe it or not see now you said that um, about scripts and stuff at mm. first I was like you know when I I think it was my first theatre performance I was more worried about the script mm. and the wording coming out right than actually acting mm -hmm. which I think a lot of um, a lot of actors make that mistake at first but that's fine you've got to make mistakes in life mm -hmm. you you learn from them you know, and you get better. And then therefore you get past that boundary, which boundary I got past. And then there was the show after I done, which was, um, which was at college, which was earthquakes in London, which was, uh, which is written by Mike Bartlett. And he's quite a well-known, uh, UK, um, uh, playwright, quite a modern day playwright as well. Um, and you know, I played one of the main characters, um, in the play, uh, and I wasn't double casted neither. So it was, I went on an emotional roller coaster journey where I explored all sorts of emotions from, um, you know, making loads of money to my wife committing suicide at the end and having to bring up a child on my own, mm -hmm. you know? So there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of emotions that I went through and, you know, that was the point where it kind of, I think it was make or break for me really for, for an actor's, from an actor's perspective, because it was either I can do it or I can't. Yeah. And I proved to myself and I maybe proved to other people that I can do it. And I do have the capacity of, mm. of being a, 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 a main character and having all of these lines and going through this emotional journey and expressing emotion on stage in front of people and being on stage for 15, 20 minutes, you know, and staying in character, you know, it was an emotional roller coaster, not just as an actor, but as a person as well. Mm. And, um, I think going from one show where I was, just remembering the lines to you know to this the, that show mm. where i just it, i was just in it you know the lines just came out i didn't even need to think of them they just came out mm. so i would say that was the um that was the most memorable one because that was where i think i excelled from being below average to maybe becoming a good actor 
yeah. I think. Yeah. I, in, in, that's that's me being critical of myself, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you, you're, you probably know this as well. You're, you're, um, you know, you are your biggest critic. And well, I'm yeah. a realistic person as well. I mean, obviously, my head's in the clouds. Yeah, my, my head's in the clouds sometimes. Oh, yeah, know, come here. Every, you don't everybody that's creative and they fucking do that. They, everybody's heads in the We're daydreamers. That's what we are, man. We're daydreamers. And <laughs> I, there's a, like, I, I asked this question. I've done a podcast yesterday and um, I asked this question to an, uh, <coughs> an actor as well. I want to ask it to you. Do you find it difficult holding down a nine to five day job or nine to five day job? Do you find it difficult? Do you find it difficult knowing that you want to do acting, you want to pursue it, and there's so much things you want to do that when it comes to having a job and keeping a job, like because the likes of me, I go into a job and I, I'll work, but it's it's just every time <clears> I go into a job, I, I find myself fucking bored out of my head. I just it's not what I want to do, and this type of stuff is what I want to do, but I'm not I'm not secure when I have this like financially and so so it, it will take fucking ages to get where I want to be, but um it's just if I if I gave up on something like this and just was stuck to a job that I I know that I'd regret it when I'm older, even if I get nowhere with it, I know that I'll just regret it. I wouldn't be happy with myself. For the likes of yourself, um, is it easy for yourself to stick to a nine to five day job Monday to Friday, and uh, knowing that you want to do all this type of stuff? Uh, it's no, it's it's. I, I would I, I'll be honest, like uh, honest, like. I mean, I'm quite lucky because basically I, I've, I've evaluated my, my career. Like, mm. so um, I've given myself an option to work flexible hours. So um, I've been quite lucky because I worked in retail before I studied mm. uh, acting and then went into the industry, which I'm going into now. So I was quite lucky that I have flexible jobs. But working a nine to five mm. is virtually, it's not impossible, but it is very distracting. Yeah. Because uh, I was telling somebody the other day, another actor, it's like, I would recommend you doing a job that's flexible. For example, I do Uber Eats, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I can go out and earn money whenever I want. There's no one telling me you need to start at this time. Mm -hmm. There is, so like, for example, if, if my agent called me she, uh, and she was like, Dan, um, I need you to audition for this. You've got 24 hours. And I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I finish work at five. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to go home, make dinner. You know, I've got to do the washing and then I've got to be up at half seven to then go back to work the next day, you know, and then you turn around to your agent and you're like, nah, I don't think I can mm -hmm. because money, guaranteed money is more important to yeah. you, which it is because you need to pay your bills. You need to do yeah, this. Course, you need to yeah. live. Of course. Do you know what I mean? And, and you know, I, I was sitting there to myself and I was like, I don't want that life. Yeah. I want to be able to say to my agent, yes, I can do it. I'm on it literally because then that means that your agent believes in you and your agent means that your, your agent can rely on you to audition yeah and they f they see that you're reliable so therefore they're more likely to give you more work mm. and um yeah i think it's, i think it's very very hard to do it plus you get distractions you've got family you've got you know your friends your social life or whatever as well that's going to um kind of stand in the way as well so it is very 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 hard to mm. maintain a nine-to-five job whilst trying to be an actor mm. uh then you've got to obviously give notice to your work to say that i'm you know i'm away for six weeks and sometimes some works are just like well i don't care about your career i care about my business yeah, all exactly. i care about is exactly. that I, I need staff mm. I, I need staff so um so yeah in my opinion i think the nine-to-five job doesn't work i've there, there is options out there guys if, if you are if you're listening to this podcast and you're an actor, there is options out there where you can work and be flexible and do whatever you want, work whenever you want. For example, I work at Uber Eats. I literally can start whenever I want and finish whenever I want. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There is ways, there's ways around it. Get a job that's flexible where you can work for yourself. And then, because you're set, technically self-employed anyway, because obviously you're an actor, mm. you know, it just means that, you know, you can really put yourself out there and you can really make money and focus on your career at the same time rather than having to pick between two. Never put yourself in that situation because then you, you are going to end up swaying between, swaying towards one side and mm. majority of them go to the nine to five job because it's guaranteed money. So, yeah, that's, that's my advice. That's Anthony. good Definitely advice. That's good advice. And um, as I said before the, the start of this podcast, this podcast is for me to learn as well. You know what I mean? So when people have advice like that, it's really, it's really handy to know and really handy to hear that as well. But going back again a little bit more to the likes of the childhood, when you were growing up um, and you start getting interested in all this, 
the, the people that you hung out with or the friends when you were younger, you know, like 10, probably on a teenage years or so, were they into the same, were they in, want to be actors as well? Did, were they, did you surround yourself no, with that no. type of people? So how difficult was it no. to do that? Like knowing that, did you still have support from your friends um, when you done that? Um, yes and no. I think a lot of them, because I, I, you know, I grew up in, you know, a majority working class area, you know, mm-hmm. theatre and drama and acting is really, you know, mostly middle class, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? And, um, so a lot of my friends didn't, um, kind of, you know, they, they, they saw it as a non-realistic job, which affected me really. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, and it's kind of like, sometimes you had people that, you know, they don't want you to do better than them mm. in, in a way. Yeah, and away from them people. You, you know, it's like, yeah, you, you do, you need to get you away from to. them people. But yeah. a lot of my friends who I grew, who, who I grew up with, um, you know, I still sometimes speak to, you know, I, yeah. s- I suppose life gets out of the way. I had some really supportive friends, you know, and then some people that still, you know, send me comments and try and be funny with me and things yeah. like that, which is, which isn't really what you want, but I suppose well, that's when you say that's funny. Do you, what what do you mean by funny? Because I I think I know what you mean, but just in case I'm wrong, what do you mean by funny when they're the point funny comments? I, I think that they they um, they obviously want to kind of you know get a reaction out of you, but they don't tend to get it. So therefore, they you know what I mean that mm-hmm. you know it's you know um, so yeah. I think that's 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 what I mean by funny. It's yeah. like they try and get, they try and put a comment in there, and then you're like, "Why? Why do you need to say that?" Yeah, and you don't react to it. I don't tend to react to things like that anyway. Where I grew up, the my area was a, it's a bad area. I live on my own now. I have my own little granny flat, it's like ten, fifteen minutes away from me, mom, me dad, and so. But where I grew up, my area, there was always them type of people because these type of people would sit in a wall, do nothing, they'd scratch the hole, they'd do fucking dead. They'd be just, they'd rob cars, everything. And I was never like that. And when I went to do, start making videos, everybody was like, what's this fucking age you're doing? And they'd slag it and you'd walk out in the street to slag it. When I start doing comedy sketches and start getting a bit of people start noticing, and I made a little short series that I was known in Sligo, in County Sligo. I was known in Westport. I was known then in, Dub- in my area in Dublin. And, um, People then, 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 then people start seeing that and then they start following the trend. They start going, oh, they're, they're fucking deadly. Them comedy sketches are so class. And that, that feeling of proving them people wrong, I know it's kind of fucked up, but I fuck, that's what I thrived for. It's like, literally, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do this. And I, I done it. And them types of people, I have so many people like that that are now coming to me saying, oh, you got this fella on, or you done this, or this video is real funny. Or, and yeah. it's, a, it's the feeling is fucking amazing because you don't want to say, but you're like, <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. Like, get me? It's, it's, <laughs> it's brilliant. And um, I, don't, I don't hate them people for it because they're the type of people that <laughs> I know it, when I look back, I go, if it wasn't for them fucking people, I know it's cliche to say, but if, if it wasn't for them people, I would not have pushed myself harder to try to prove people like that wrong. So um, do you have a message to them type of people that want to do stuff like what we're doing, but are afraid of doing it just in case they get slagged or they get like taken the piss off? Do you have, do you have any advice for them people? Yeah, I think I think the the advice that I would have to to fellow people who who are wanting to obviously do what we're doing and and are not too sure is uh, because they're worried about what other people think. Then you know, I, I've you 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 really cannot in this industry, especially what we do, you cannot really care. You can care about what other people think, mm. but you really have to use that as fuel. So mm. use it as petrol. Put it in your put put it in your tank. Put it in your tank and you know use it to keep to f- keep fueling you all the way to where you wanting to go, um, you know, and and just remember people are, people are no matter who you are, no matter how nice you are, mm. and you could be the nicest person in the world, there'll always be one person that oh, yeah. has something bad to say about you. Mm. So you know, just remember that you're not the only person that's going through that. Everybody goes through that. People talk about you no matter who you are. Mm. You know, and there's a well-known saying um, that I, I read quite recently, actually, that was uh, that was uh, which is so true. 
is it is um it goes on along the lines of you know if people are if people are talking about you then you're doing something right i fucking like do you know what i mean yeah 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 you know yeah yeah you 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 must be doing something right if people are talking about you Mm. you know what i mean Mm. you know if people are saying oh have you seen have you seen what such and such has been doing Mm. you know and they're like no and then they start talking about you and where the mouth gets around then everyone wants to have a have a slice of the cake yeah they want to yeah. see what, what you've been up to you know yeah so many nosy people in this world especially with social media it's so easy for people to be nosy <laughs> yeah no i you know it's it's come here what for the likes of what we're doing we're putting ourselves out there we we know that whatever we do there, there could be backlash from it um but as you said that you do you need to use them people as fuel and, and, and stuff like that but um, I'm kind of going to go off this kind of subject and go into um, the likes of when sure. I, I want to ask you, is there, since you started your career, so um, have you been in a, in any short films or any commercials? Like what, what, what has been, what have you been doing? Um, a lot of the, um, see, cause obviously I've been in education for so many years. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't been able to fully commit. Yeah. fully to commit to getting an agent and you know fully committing to going into you know you know shows and stuff like that uh, or like other theatre shows or because I've been doing stuff at college which clashes with with that um, so a lot of stuff I've done is like short films with independent film film crews uh, and independent short films independent uh, films with another kind of short you know film company who have a low budget and like you know student films I've done some as well, mm. and I've done um, some voice acting as well uh, in America. Mm. When I mean in, in America, I mean I was working from the UK, but it was for an American yeah, yeah. Um, producer mm. who had contacted me through social media. So, yeah. like, I've, I've I've been you know doing I've I've done a lot, but it's not stuff that you know be like maybe like a web series or it might be like something mm. on YouTube or you know i recently worked on a mockumentary which will be coming out soon i've still got to reshoot for that so guys keep yourself out for that that, um, mm-hmm. that script's won an award so keep, keep, keep an eye out for that it's uh, i have to do the scottish accent and uh, yeah. i'm, I'm uh, <laughs> i've watched it and uh, I've, uh, i'm pretty happy with it actually yeah. to be honest um you know it's difficult being an english actor in scotland because if you do scottish accents they're, they're like that watching you they're like yeah <laughs> you know uh, Oh no, he didn't say that right. He didn't yeah. say that right. He didn't say you probably get the same when people try to do an Irish yeah, accent, right? Yeah, like, he yeah, didn't say exactly, that properly yeah. or she didn't say that. So yeah. yeah, you didn't you didn't pronounce it so but it's um but um but yeah, no, I've done I've done quite a lot because I wanted to experience all of these things because you know, in some courses you do, you know, it's mostly theatre based. Mm. You know, but I'm wanting to mostly be a film actor or uh, you know, you know, a, a TV, you know, film and TV. I love like theatre though. Like I love doing like contemporary theatre, so like mm you know, things that are relevant nowadays rather than Shakespeare. Yeah. I know obviously Shakespeare is still relevant, but like I would rather be doing stuff that's, you know, maybe somebody's written a modern day play than maybe doing like a classical, you know, Shakespeare play or a classical yeah. Greek play. I would rather do stuff because I can, I can relate to it more, yeah. you know, yeah. um, modern day stuff. So that's what I prefer. But, but yeah, no, I've, uh, I've done, I've done a few things, you know, I've played a few, a few characters. Uh, I tend to really go, uh, I tend to, I'm, I'm sort of going down the road of kind of like bad, not bad guy, but, you know, kind of, you know, intimidating guy, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, but I can also play like a really soft character as well. So, you know, it's a real good uh, sort of variety I can play, which is, which is, which is important and which is good. It shows a range rather yeah. than you just playing the same character all the time. And how, how do you get, how do you get into the character's mindset? Um, if you know you're playing a certain character, how do you do that? Do you, do you wait until you get to um, the place that you're going to be auditioning? Sorry, um, are you? Do you do it at home or do you do it? Say if you're doing a play or so, do you do it only when you're in the theatre? Like you know, right act the mode is on when I'm in the theatre. That's when I get into the character's head. Or do you do it when you're at home as well? Um, what what way do you do it? Um, I, to be honest, I, I do it both ways. So obviously when, when, when I do self tapes, mm. you know, it's, um, it's kind of like, I need to get myself into that character. So I kind of get into its mindset. So when I read the text, I really kind of like evaluate the intention behind every line and what, what that character might be thinking and mm. what their kind of thought process is during that period of time. Mm. Uh, so that's what I do tend to do at home when I'm in theater. It's different because like, you know, you might be in the rehearsal space anyway 
So you might be having to, you might just be blocking yourself or walking around the stage and remembering where you are in the play and where you are during that time. Mm. And it naturally just comes out for me in, in a weird way. So, um, but you know, I, it's, to, to really, you know, I can, it's like, uh, sometimes, you know, I need to obviously leave characters behind. Uh, you know, you don't want to take the character home with you sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, um, you know what I mean? So it's, I quite like, um, you know, sometimes I might have a costume thing that I have and I'll never take that home with me. I'll leave it at home, uh, leave it wherever I am performing. So that means I leave that character there and come back to it tomorrow, mm. you know, rather than taking it home with me, for example. Um, I did that during, um, during one of the plays I did. I, I left my leather jacket at the time at home. Uh, sorry, at, um, at, at the at the rehearsal. Well, mm. sorry, at, at, at the theatre. And I just, you know it kind of released, I, I mentally told myself, once I put that jacket away, that's me done. Mm. And then I go back to my normal life. So, yeah. but sometimes it can be quite hard to take yourself out of that character, mm. especially when you've been drilling it into your mind so much. And some people like to do um, method acting as well yeah. to make it more realistic, yeah. which is, um, which can be quite dangerous sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, putting yourself through, through that, you know, mm. um, but it sometimes works perfectly yeah. well yeah. but you know it, it can it can mess you up in the mind a little bit so but um but yeah my methods are you know really kind of understanding the text really really rehearsing it and putting different intentions behind it mm. and then it makes me discover the character so i might you know if if in in the text i might have you know um i might be talking about something but then i could be like saying it to my mum how would i say it to my dad how would i say it to my best friend mm. how would i say it to a shopkeeper how would i say it to this it's just to have an understanding of what the intention is behind the character so that's that's what i do that's most good. of the time yeah I, that's what i like that's what i like to hear um it, it shows that you have a lot of uh thought that goes into it and it shows that you're real dedicated as well um but i i do want to ask as be, well yeah yeah go on go on um, you, you do, you, you have to be dedicated because, um, there's no point of just, you know, going into auditions and doing self tapes and things like that. Just saying the lines, mm. you know, you know, some people learn their lines, you know, 24 hours beforehand, but you know, obviously sometimes you have to, but it's mm. like to, to really find a process to really process it all and, you know, really have it in your mind and really express it as if you are the person rather than just going, you know saying the lines out as if you're just presenting yourself you know mm. just get, get that emotion behind it and get that thought process and the intention there and really express it so then that means that you're showing whoever you're performing in front of whether it's a director a casting director or anybody that they look at you and go you know this person has really put you know real thought into this and mm. you know they really have an understanding of what the character is going through mentally and physically you mm. know so yeah really rehearse it you know, don't half R six. If you half R six, there's no point in doing it. Yeah. You won't get it anyway. Yeah. You know, if you if you go in and audition, you go in and say yes, I done a great job. Then that's what you want. If you come out saying, oh fuck, you know, Jesus, mm. that was pretty shit. I was, mm. you know, I I've really fucked that up. Then there's a reason behind it. It's maybe you haven't learned your lines. You haven't done it properly. You've got distractions. You know, you've been working. You're tired. You know, really take that time to really embrace it. So yeah, that's what, yeah. So that's my advice on yeah. that. That's good. That's good. Um, I want to ask as well, who inspired you to get into it? Like, the, is it a certain actor that you watch? Like, who's your actor that inspired you to kind of like, um, wanting to do this? Oh, I, I love this question. I love this question so much, but sometimes I, I, I when I talk about him, I do well up a little bit because he's my hero. Yeah. Um, because, um, yeah, uh, Robin Williams. Oh, um, yeah. yeah like yeah i remember speaking to somebody in in pre like previously about robin williams and he actually turned around to me and just went you know he was just too talented you yeah. know with with his um with his range you know he could be a he could like from goodwill hunting to mrs doubtfire you know yeah. from one extreme to the next you know he, yeah. and he had all of this you know he was, he was so well for comedy but you know, he really inspired me, and you know the film Hook. Oh, yeah. I just Holy you know shit, what I mean. That it's just that film. film was just incredible. Yeah, like it's a really good film. It's just yeah, it is it just like 
you know, it's not just that, it's just the adventure, you know, he went mm. through and, you know, the, the one extreme to the next of being in London to then being in Neverland and like set changing and mm. meeting all the kids and, you know, and, you know, working with the director like Steven Spielberg and, you know, the music of John Williams, you know what I mean? It's just mm. to be a part of that, you know, must have been amazing. And I watched him and he inspired me so much mm. of like his, you know, there's a scene where one of the boys, um, one of the one of the boys in Neverland where he goes, oh, oh do you remember your mother, Peter? And he's yeah. like, uh, no, like I don't, I've, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, it was really touching and, mm. you know, it makes me cry every time. Yeah, and yeah. Um, sometimes I can't watch stuff anymore because it's uh, <laughs> too emotional for me yeah. to, to watch because he was, he was my hero and he always will be. Yeah. And yeah, he really inspired me to get into acting because I loved his style and I loved his, you know, his, his personality and yeah. you know his hard work his dedication and his real sort of intense sort of thought that he put into his characters i really appreciated it and i think that's exactly what got me into acting mm. and you know i i appreciate it and i thank him mm. so much you know um for that well, yeah. Do you know what I love? I love asking people that question as well. If they're if they're gonna do something like that, it's like who you who inspired you, and when they talk about their hero or the the person that inspires them, you can see the joy in their face when they're talking about them. And when I asked you, um, you could see that we went from like serious conversation, whatever, to you were like a fucking you were like a kid there, just talking about your hero, like you were just <laughs> a kid, and he was right in front, of you and you're just you were able to say what you want to say, and I love saying that because it's it's I love man that the reason I made videos is to make people laugh and stuff, and I I done that, and I I love when people are just happy and they 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 fucking laugh, <clears throat> I fucking love it, and asking that question um every now and again to people and they you see that joy in their face it's 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 a nice thing to see like and i know i don't know you but it's it's nice to see to see that you know um for likes that but for the film what film also what is the iconic film for you what is your favorite film because my mine would be goodfellas i could watch goodfellas fucking 10 times a day i i love goodfellas i love it it's so good uh the green mile as well i love as well um but I, I will, I, I, we can talk more about this if you've seen this, but I, I just want to know who, uh, what your favorite film is, but I saw a Robin Williams film called What Dreams May Come. Have you ever seen that film? No, I haven't. No, no, that's terrible. Where you, oh, <laughs> that's terrible. No one, right. <laughs> so I, I seen that film and I'm not messing. I watched that film, me, me dad, we're all sitting down, whatever. And I watched that film and, about, I'd say about a few days later, about four or five days later, he died. And if you watch the film, and then you that happens, and then you go back and watch the film again, I'm telling you now, it's just a different perspective of of watching that. Uh, hang on, what, hang on. This is is this the one when he goes to the Brooklyn Bridge? This this is the one where. Um, for any spoilers out there, please still go watch. If you haven't watched it yourself, Daniel, please go watch it. But it's his his <laughs> kids, his kids. Like at the very start, you know it, so it's not a spoiler. His kids die in um in a car accident, and then um his wife, I think, then just can't take anymore. So it hit it, it himself as well. But he's he's in he's in heaven, and um it's just the shit he talks about. And if you watch that, knowing what. Oh, what he no, went through, <laughs> what he went through, you know, like everybody knows that he, he you know I mean, he, he committed suicide. But if you want, if you watch that, if you watch that film, knowing that what he was going on in his head, you'd sit there and you'd bawl your eyes out crying. I keep telling my friend James yeah. for the past two or three days to watch it, um, but likes that. But um, if, if there is a film that you want to watch and you haven't seen, Daniel, please go, go watch that. Look it up online and watch it because it's, it's okay. so fucking okay. good. Um, right. but uh, yeah, but I'm gonna go back to um, what what is your iconic film? What is your favorite film that you could watch again and again and you wouldn't get bored of? Oh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, Ooh, just, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, just um, just just yeah, I just uh, Lord of the Rings for me is just oh my god, it's um. Yeah, I remember going to see The Fellowship of the Ring in 2001 when mm -hmm. I was still at primary school. Uh, my mum took me to the cinema. She was just like, yeah, we, we're going to go see Lord of the Rings, Dan. 
I was like, well, um, I, I, I've never heard of it, but I, my friends at, at school have been talking about it. Apparently it's good. Yeah, cool. So we went and watched it. At the time, Harry Potter was in the cinema as oh, well. Fuck. So it was like that. Nip and tuck, yeah. nick and, nip and tuck, nick and tuck, yeah. you know? And I went to see it and I just went, wow. Mm. Just wow. Just the adventure, and then I started getting into Lord of the Rings, Warhammer, and you know I started getting on to, into all of these sort of things, and you know I, I just became Lord of the Rings obsessed. And then Two Towers came out, and then the Return of the King came out, okay, man, and I yeah, watched the Return yeah. of the King, and I just I went to go and see that twice, and I got emotional in the cinema. I must have been about thirteen at the time, thinking, "Oh, that's it, it's the end. I can't yeah. watch this ever again. Oh, I'm sad now, you know." And yeah. it's crazy because. Um, you know, then 10 years later, they brought the hobbits out. And I was yeah. just like, here we go, right? Childhood, here we go. 10 years later, we're ready to go. Let's do this. Mm. And I was, I, was ne- I was not just disappointed. Mm. The only thing I was disappointed with was that the fact that they used more CGI in the hobbit. Because in the Lord of the Rings, they used full costume for the, yeah. the orcs. Mm. And these guys are like, Whoa. and um, they probably spent more money back then as well. Mm. Uh, but no, a lot of the rings, mate. It's just I could watch it over and over and over again. I don't care. It's three hours long each episode. Yep. I'll do a lot of the rings marathon. I'll probably do one today. Now we've spoken yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I do like a lot of the rings. It's it's really it's really really good. Um, I do. I only watched The Hobbit recently, probably about a few weeks ago. I watched one, two, and three, and I I fucking enjoyed it. And it did make me want to watch. I I I do get when you were saying about the orcs and all the CGI and so that I was looking at the Yorks going, this is a bit fucking, ugh, it doesn't feel real, but I, I still enjoyed watching it. And then it what it made me want to watch the Lord of the Rings as well. Um, but um, for, the, for the likes of all that, I think with what you're doing and that you haven't lost your passion yet, that I have to, there's a lot of people that don't, continue they don't they don't fucking do anything with it and you can see that you're very passionate about it and this is this is what you want to do for the rest of your life you can see that you can fucking see you can yeah. you can hear it in your voice um and i just i want to apply you for that because fair play to you because um a lot of Thank people you. don't <laughs> stick with it, man a lot of people don't stick with it um but i i do want you back on um to the podcast probably in july or so because i'm trying to get as much guests as i can for 100 episodes different guests but after the 100 i can get more people on then um but hopefully in about july or august i can get you back on because i'm going to take a deep dive on your instagram i want to talk more about you i want to get to know you more i want the audience to know you more you know um 100 and hopefully there's people out there that um, are feeling the same way as you are and they they want to do this and you could be that spokesman for them you get me and um, so yeah um, i am going to get into the last segment now this was only possibly a half an hour podcast i'm enjoying myself for so much we went over the half an hour man so fucking this is good um, <laughs> yeah that's what happens it always goes over time doesn't it <laughs> but um i'm going to get into the last segment now and this is kind of this is kind of uh swaying off from what what the reason we got you on but everybody knows by now everybody that got to this stage and they they watch it guys we're gonna get into it now we're getting into ghost stories scary. right now listen to me right this is something i'm real passionate but not passionate but i fucking i fucking love her right and (laughs) it's oh it's okay if like i could be talking about anything to any guest and i'll still bring this up um it's okay if you don't have a story or or something like that. It's just it's I just have, I'm very interested. Oh, fucking lovely, stories. right? We're gonna have we're gonna, we're fucking gonna enjoy ourselves, right? <laughs> um, so one, do you believe in the afterlife? Um, or the likes of that? And two, yeah, I do. I know now, but do you have a story you can tell? One story that is embedded in your head. Oh, right. Okay. Do I believe in an afterlife? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. Yeah, it is difficult. I don't know. I don't. Know. I hope so. I hope so. Do you know what I mean? I hope we don't just end and that's it. Do you know what I mean? I do. I, I think it would be, you know, do I believe in reincarnation? Maybe, maybe, maybe we a come back. Maybe I was. I met a guy once, mm. uh, Anthony. Right. I'll tell you this. I met yeah. a guy once. So you know, I've just recently get into cycling. Um, mm about a year ago so i was buying um i bought myself a bike and then I, uh, this guy was selling a helmet online for really cheap so he said come pick it up so i went there i went to his house 
<laughs> and um, you know, he was he was he was he was a maybe a bit of a weak guy, right? Yeah. He was like, uh, you know, oh, you know, he wanted he wanted to show me all this stuff in his house. I'm like, dude, I've literally just come in to pick, pick the helmet and just go. Yeah, yeah, to, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And he was like, yeah. And um, so, do you believe in like um, like um, you know um, reincarnation? I was like, um, I don't know. He goes, well, I'm I can confirm it was I was. I was a Roman soldier and he listed all of these things that you used to be. And I was just like, right, I'm going to, so I'm going to go. <laughs> hey, keep the fucking bike. It's grand. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just like, right, I'm going to, to um, yeah, no, that's, that's really good. Like I, I like that, you know? Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty. So I, I had this kind of interaction of him kind of making him, they, it wasn't so much that I was trying to make him feel better, but I was quite yeah. interested in it. And I was like, but well, I'm, I'm got to go. Sorry, dude. Like, yeah. is that okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, go on, go on. Uh, and then he said something like, yes. He didn't say, like, may the force be with you or something, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he said something along the lines of that, and I was just like, okay. yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I get to talk about him right now, you know? Yeah, I get yeah, to tell yeah. you the story about him. But um, <clears throat> it's weird, because, like, when you talk about afterlife and stuff like that, I just thought reincarnation, and then brings me to that story. that I, It was literally about a year ago. It was mm. weird. He lives, he lives about 10 miles away from me. so. Um, but um, when it comes to um, ghost stories, I have two that I'll talk to you about. Yeah, players right? do. So the first one is when, when I was 11 years old, 12 years old, we used to, I used to go to Nonsuch Park a lot when I was a kid uh, with friends because mm. uh, it was around the corner from where I lived. Uh, Nonsuch Park, uh, just for people who are not necessarily clued up on history, uh, Henry VIII had uh, a manor in Nonsuch Park, which he used to live in quite a lot. Mm. Um, and his fame, one of his famous wives used to um, live there. Mm. And her name was Anne Boleyn, mm. which is probably the most famous um, one of his wives, I would probably say, because it's very interesting. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> next to Nonsuch Park, there is a road that's called Anne Boleyn's Walk. Now, Anthony, why do you think it's called Anne Boleyn's Walk? Because of the wife or people see her walking down the road all the time maybe was it a hundred percent that's exactly hell. why it's called ambulance walk because people see her walking down there they, they say her. halloween every year mm. they spot her there and we had um we, we had a weird, little bit of an incident when i was riding home it must have been about seven half seven it was during the winter so it was quite dark yeah yeah and i'd seen something walk past that i was like, I was like jesus christ that's her yeah. And like she was walking, I don't know if it was a person. Yeah. I don't know whether it was, a, you know, I don't know what it was. Yeah. And the thing is on Amberlynn's walk on Halloween, at half past seven, mm, we yeah. will never know. Yeah. We will never know. Um, the, the other thing as well is that I have is, is sometimes my, my partner will tell you about this actually one day. Mm. She'll, um, but I'm, I wake up during the night and I'm like, get out. Or I'm like, oh, there's someone at the window. Hmm. But I think that's more of something that's maybe I'm dreaming. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, no, that, there's somebody by the window. Yeah. And like I'm hallucinating a little bit and my mind's not fully functioned. But I've had things like that. And like, you know, you, you do feel somebody's presence maybe in your in your house. Yeah. And, I, that, you know, I've, I've I need had to tell you something like right now. I need to tell you something right now. This oh, might freak God, you out. Right? This might freak you out. I can show you the podcast. At the very start of this podcast, do you ever see when they talk about orbs? Don't they talk about orbs? You say, yeah. oh, you can see orbs. I'm not trying to freak you out, and I can show you the footage right now. People are probably, if you go back to the start of the podcast, people look at it. Right around you, you can see orbs floating around you, and it, keep came on, it kept coming up on that side of where there's more space. Now, I'm, I know if someone said that to me while I was doing the podcast, I'd, I'd end the podcast around my house, but I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know now that if when this when this podcast is out daniel right go back to the very start and watch over your shoulder wait and you see things oh, oh, no. i swear to god i'm just i know it's fucking come here i'm just telling you i know it's fucking freaky but i'm just, oh no dude I, i'm just i need to let you know right i know it's fucking <laughs> freaky right but i just just when it comes out just watch just fucking watch the things flow right and i know that's fucking freaky Right, <laughs> I know, I know. Right, I'm sorry. Right, but I had to say it. Right, that's it. Right, go on, continue with your song <laughs> if you can. Go on. 
that's fucking uh, that you um, said that yeah and then i i didn't i was like i'm not saying nothing i was like i'm not saying it's probably just me but when you said that i was like right i have to bring that up go on yeah i just uh i just have like as i say like it's more of a thing of like i think my flat is haunted a little bit yeah, well, or i have some form of presence because um like i've lost uh i've lost family members and close friends yeah. you know and like you never know they could be you know floating around trying to give me messages or tell me things and yeah. you know i'm i'm not so scared of it as well the only thing that, like i'm scared of like I've... the thing is i have two dogs yeah so the thing is my dogs will bark mm. really like will bark 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 if somebody was to be in my flat yeah or somebody was to come in my flat or whatever mm. so you know and if they're not barking and i sense it, it's just me so i've train my mind to kind of just step away from it and not not give them the fear of me just i just kind of walk away from it and just well not literally walk away but just go back to bed do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. but that's um i've had my girlfriend say that i think there's somebody at the door and i look and i was like don't freak me out yeah as well so like i just generally think this place has a bit of uh okay, okay. i'm telling you now man when this podcast comes out just fucking watch it just watch the start of it and i'm telling you now just watch it and I, I'll, I'll even fucking screenshot the shit and send it to you after this. That's mad. Right, okay. That's fucking mad. All I'm thinking about now is someone fucking coming out in the corner or something. They're going to scare the shit out of me. But um, yeah, it's fucking, man, fucking peace be with you there because that's fucking terrifying. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah. So is, is, that the, is that the story? Is that more? Is there any, anything else you'd like to add to the story? Is, there? is, that, is that the story there? No, that's that's only really the story. I just have some yeah. things that come into my flat. Like obviously, yeah. I've, I've feel presence and stuff like that in my flat, but that's about it, really. Mm. Have you? What about you, Anthony? Have you had some dodgy experiences? Nope. And I continue not to want to have them. Nope. I don't want any dodgy experience. Nothing <laughs> like that. My ma does. My ma. My ma was lying in bed uh, one night, and right. I know this sounds fucked up, but this is what she said. Like she, my ma's the type of person that. She dreams of stuff and they come true. Um, she can't describe it, but it's it's weird. But she said she was in bed one night and she was on the phone talking to her friends. Um, and she was watching EastEnders. And what happened was is that there was in EastEnders where the markets are. There was a little girl and she was just standing there. And my man goes, "What the fuck is that?" And she goes, "See the little girl there? Who's the actress?" And he goes, "What little girl?" He goes, the little girl there, you see her? She's standing in the middle of the road and they're all talking. And he goes, Sandra, there's no, there's no fucking, there's no girl there. Like, and my ma goes, what? And the way my ma described the next, right? I, I don't fucking, I can't believe it because I don't, I don't know what it is, but she <laughs> fucking swears to God that this happened. That someone walked out of the wall, a little girl walked out of the wall, went into the other wall. But the weird thing about it is, is that my neighbor, that's two doors down from my ma. The boyfriend ran out of the house screaming. Okay. And he still doesn't go back to that house. Now, I was like, why is that? Is because them two were sitting there minding. They were babysitting the, their nieces and nephews. And that when they were sitting there watching the telly, them two said that they saw a little girl come out of the wall and go into the other wall. And he still doesn't go back to the house. He still oh doesn't my go God, man. And I was like, I was like, I'm, I feel so hard. Like, I'm like, I, how can you, like, I, like, they could all just be delusional, drunk, whatever. But how can my ma <laughs> see the exact same thing as they did? And it literally, he starts screaming like minutes after. And he, he wouldn't come back to that. He would not go back to that house. And he still doesn't come back, go back to that house. And I know it's weird. Oh you know, people are watching and they're like, God, this mate. is bullshit, whatever. But I, I, my ma's the type of person she 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 won't lie. She won't lie about that. She she wouldn't fucking lie about that. So that's that's the type of less me ma's gone mental the past few years. But um, yeah, that's 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 my story. <laughs> oh, I've God. never told a ghost story, but that's the type of fucking my story. And I thought that thing, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's fucking it's mad. But that thing when you were describing saying there's presents in your house and so, and I was like, oh shit. Now I have to stay calm now because what well, I just I seen little things floating around beside him and. 
whatever and the fucking oh god but anyway um i i hope you don't die after this i hope you're all right you're still alive we can get you back on the podcast <laughs> um, <laughs> me too <laughs> um but before we go is there anything you'd like to plug is there any short films that you're in that are out on youtube or do you want me to plug your instagram or so let us let us know uh, as i say like i've got a mockumentary coming out soon which i'll probably be plugging um at some point um which i uh, filmed a couple of months ago uh, we've still got to reshoot a scene so uh, look out for that uh you can follow me on instagram guys at daniel reynolds sorry daniel underscore reynolds 22 mm-hmm. give me a follow on instagram twitter at daniel reynolds 20 not reynolds 20 and uh give me on tiktok man daniel reynolds yeah. actor i'm loving that tiktok it's stuff fucking man. Dead. So, I, yeah. I wish we give could us- have talked about that more but um for the next time you're going to have so much more videos. I will. I'll fucking, I think I follow you on it. I do follow you on it already. And if I don't, I'll be doing it now straight after the podcast. Um, because TikTok's Sounds man, they're, good, fucking, they're, they're so good. Like that's, they're fucking brilliant. Like they're, they're <laughs> no. it's a new vine. It is. It's a new vine. Um, but yeah, it Daniel, is. man, is. thanks very much for coming on and uh, saying that you do it because I'm always looking for new guests. And the fact that I'm reaching out to different countries as well now and getting, you know, creative people and fascinating people to listen to. And, it's just, you never know what's going to happen when you get these people on. You don't know if they're going to be fucking a bit mad in the head or fucking yoke. But I can tell, I can say right now, and I always say this, it's like a catchphrase I say. If I wasn't recording, I'd still say this to you. Um, that you're a genuine guy. I, I think you're a nice, genuine guy, man. And I think that what you're doing right now is, is, is really fucking good. So keep at it. You get me? And Thank you. stick at it, you know? So, um, so thanks very much for coming on and uh, being a part of the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for... Thank you. Thank you for having me, Anthony. And you too as well, man. Exactly the same words to you. You keep doing your thing, man. And mm. uh, I, it's been an absolute pleasure being a part of your podcast. And it's not just all right. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Podcast. I think it's all right. That's what that is. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> um, so, it so, guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of the All Right Podcast. Um, please, all the social medias, mine will down, be down below. Daniel's will be down below. Please go check him out. Um, give him a follow on TikTok, as he says. Uh, follow him on Instagram. And, you know, just to see what Daniel's doing, you know. And if he, when his mockumentary comes out, he can probably come back on. We can talk more about that as well. Daniel as well, you know, uh, when that comes out. And we'll have much more to talk about. So until next time, guys, remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an all right podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>